Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. We are so privileged to be here today and uh, be, being able to be given the opportunity to present something that's probably near and dear to my heart, but I know especially Judge Linda Davis. Um, let me just give you a little backdrop. Uh, most of you know that I practiced law. In fact, if you haven't, um, I'd be real surprised. But uh, I met Judge Davis uh, after she did a stint of teaching for uh, about 15 years, and then she was in the county prosecutor's office for about almost 20 years. And then she became a judge, and I saw her career pretty much all the way through. We've known each other. We are personal friends. I've had the privilege and the pleasure of practicing before her, but also working with her as a county prosecutor. We used to deal with families, and that's the real deal, when families would come in and said, Pete, I found needles and syringes, I found pills in my kids' um, armoire, chest of drawers, in the car. I don't know what to do. I think my kid's on uh, heroin. And I'd say, um, well, if you go to the cops, you're gonna be dealing with an issue then with police, because they have to arrest them. But if you go to Families Against Narcotics, they're gonna talk about how they dealt with their own child or their own loved one, could be an adult, a grandma, grandpa, whoever, to see what they could do to go ahead and soothe their pain. Now we know it's a crisis, it's an epidemic, I've heard it since I've been up here, but I've seen it in real life. Judge Davis is the champion because she started Families Against Narcotics, or FAN. It is all over the place, guys, and she's got 20-something chapters here in Michigan, and out sedate. She's going to talk about it. So what do you do? How does it start? Well, I remember getting with Linda, and I am allowed to call her Linda, because even though she's a judge, we're friends, right? That would be disrespectful. But as a result, I did this. I remember her getting together with the healthcare facilities and finding out what is the troublesome situation, because doctors are the ones that first and foremost see patients. And I know Senator Bizon, Dr. John Bizon, understands what I'm going to be saying real soon. And it's this. When you go in to see a doctor, they manage pain. And when I blew my knee out playing football and I blew my back out playing football at De La Salle High School, I remember them giving me a little bottle with 30 little pills in it and said, take this every five hours. He's a doctor. He knows what he's doing. He's giving me these pills. And I took them. I didn't become an addict. But people that go ahead and have different levels of tolerance may become an addict. So when we had joined with some of these uh, fine establishments, like Henry Ford Hospital, for instance, Dr. Tony Colucci, who's a pal of mine and Linda's, had admitted, look, in the emergency room, we manage pain quickly and effectively, and we get rated on how we manage pain. And Dr. Bizon shakes his head, yes. And it's a shame because you go and give propofol to propel sleep, compel sleep, they call it. But you give these things called opioids before they leave the hospital, which has caused the epidemic in some of these athletes <coughs> because they're the first and foremost to get these pills. So today, let's get right to it. Um, this Senate bill, 307, is long overdue. I know that at De La Salle High School, I introduced Linda to go in and bring it to the athletes at De La Salle. And it's been five, six years now at least, they play the video, they talk about it so that the athlete knows there's alternatives, substitutes, options for everybody. So September 1st, 2021, DHHS, who's, you know, the controller, I call it, has got to go ahead and adopt and approve an opioid awareness training program that includes the following, just three things. The risk of opioid addiction to youth athletes who were prescribed opioids after suffering injuries while participating in athletic activities. The danger of the game, you're gonna see the video. So we brought a movie today. This is the video that we wanna show, but we wanna also include some female athletes because these individuals are the real deal. These are the ones that got hooked. We didn't have anybody because it's not a real promising or like Linda says to me, you know, it's not something people want to talk about, that they became addicts. I get it. But the danger of the game is a video by Families Against Narcotics. It doesn't cost anything. It's on a link. So I don't want to hear about money today. And any other information that DHHS determines is relevant. You guys were here, some of you, 
that are on the committee, when uh, John Prose in 2017 had passed Senate Bill 352, and 352 was the concussion uh, bill that you, they mandated it. It said, look, people that have concussions ought to know when they have concussions, or at least be given information that will allow them to ascertain, did they have a concussion? So as such, that's already in law, and this is nothing more than like a, a, a supplement to that because DHHS has already given out that information to these athletes. Now, I remember, as does you on this committee, we all had to get physicals and parents' consent when we played sports. Still going on today. Nothing's changed. So this is just supplementing that paperwork. But more importantly, there's a link, and that's what we want every student to look at. So at least they feel the effects and walk away with something. So before Judge Davis goes ahead and really puts the thunder here, I want to introduce my friend and pal, Judge Linda Davis. Thank you. Good. Button there, and it'll, oh. there you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, chairman and members of the Senate, thank you for having me here today. Um, Pete said it right when he said that this is a bill that's near and dear to my heart. I've worked in the field of substance use as a prosecutor, um, as a, 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 a judge, and I ran a, a very successful drug court in, in Michigan. Uh, but of all the things I've done in my life, the thing I'm most proud of is Families Against Narcotics. Um, that is an accomplishment that came from my heart, not just from learning in a book. Uh, and it came from that heart because it was broken at one point. Um, my daughter, uh, at 17 years of age, uh, underwent surgery for her knee because of a sporting injury. And like a good parent, I did exactly what the doctor told me to do, and I gave her Vicodin for some time after that. Uh, that was the beginning of an addiction that almost took her life. I'm one of the fortunate parents that made it through that, and she's one of the fortunate children that, almost, uh, that also has made it through opiate addiction. She has not I touched an opiate for over 10 years now. But I work daily with parents that did exactly what I did. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the importance of parents having this information as well. If I had known that Vicodin was a synthetic heroin, um, I would have never given that to my child. We would have bared the pain and we would have tried another avenue. And I work daily with parents that go through the same guilt that I did, that every time I went to visit my daughter, I had to bear the guilt of I helped get her there because I didn't know. And if I had a dollar for every parent that has told me, I didn't know that if I gave my daughter Vicodin because she had a tooth pulled. I didn't know if I gave my child Vicodin because they injured their shoulder or broke a bone. If I would have known I would have never, ever given my child that substance, and we would have searched long and hard for other avenues to treat that pain. As a result of that, this video is long overdue. We are in the middle of, the, of a crisis, and while Pete and I are talking today, three more people will die in the United States of overdoses to prescription drugs and opiates. And yet, we are not educating our children quick enough so that they can make intelligent decisions and that their parents can make intelligent decisions. What we're asking you here is for very minimal education. Education that every athlete, and we did do research and I worked with the University of Michigan before we produced this video uh, and met with their experts and they indicated that 74% of all junior high and high school students pace, play some athletic sport, whether it's cheerleading, tennis, basketball, volleyball, uh, football, hockey, um, they all play sports. And if they don't play them in school, they play them on recreational leagues. So stop and think about a nine minute video could educate 74% of our students and 74% of their parents at the junior high and high school level. Isn't that the kind of expediency we want in getting the word out about the dangers of opiate use? Um, we will work closely with the HHS. FAN has a, um, a wonderful relationship with them. We've been working with them on this video. We just did a new edit that was um, 
was sent this morning actually uh, to make some changes that DHHS recommended. We are still looking for a female athlete and to versify the film more. Uh, but we've always used real people with real stories because that's impactful when you know that those young athletes are real people who succumbed unbearable addiction and had to overcome it. It's different than watching people act out a script. So we will work diligently to locate those individuals. It's harder with females because the stigma is greater for women uh, that are addicted to substances. Uh, but we will work long and hard to make that happen, to diversify this and meet the standards that the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services would like us to meet uh, and make changes along with them as this proceeds. I'm ecstatic about this bill. Um, it concerns me, and Pete told me not to bring it up, but I will anyhow. Um, he wasn't my boss the last time I checked. Uh, but uh, the only thing that concerns me is we're talking about a date of 2021. Um, and I would like to see that expedited, and if we can get the materials and the film done before that, uh, that we do this in 2020 at the beginning of the school year. Um, if three people died in the last half hour while we were talking, how many will die before 2021 that don't have this information? I would also like to indicate to you that Families Against Narcotics is all over the state and we are growing almost faster than I can keep up with right now. Um, but we also speak in over 250 schools across the state of Michigan and we have played this video in those schools. And the one thing that every athletic director and teacher and parent that has seen this has said to me is why isn't this required for all of our students and all of our parents? This is something that needs to be done and it needs to be done soon. I saw Senator Johnson jotting tons of notes, so we'll turn it over to Senator Johnson and, and anybody else that would like to ask a question. Uh, thank you, Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And Pete, thank you. Or, I mean, Senator Lucido, thank you so much for bringing this. I, I think um, opiate uh, addiction is far worse than what we've even imagined in it impact is more than just that person as we've seen there and we've all seen probably in our lives with others. Um, I was looking at by September 1st, 2021, that DHHS must develop these certain things or adopt. And the first one is the risk of opiate addiction to youth athletes who are prescribed opiates after suffering injuries while participating in um, athletic activities. Is that some specific uh, piece of literature that's already done, or are they expected to come up with something? Uh, as Linda's indicated, she's been working hand in glove <laughs> with uh, DHHS. Um, she was on uh, the former governor's task force. In fact, she was the one that actually was chairing. And as such, the, the, the information was no different than when John Pro's had to go ahead and put together the concussion. They want to make sure that they have the sum and substance necessary to give the information as a take home for mom and dads because there's a starting block. You want to start with the athletes and then ultimately lead with the families because the parents are the ones, as Dr. Colucci has indicated, have to be there to answer these questions. Does my child have to take this? Is there some substitute? Is there an alternative? Can we use Motrin? instead of an opiate. And what I'm gonna answer is, hand in glove means that the department promulgates rules for our health and safety, just like the concussion. So we wanna make them work together, and Linda can say it, what has been evolving is discussions about what's the best way to make this presentation. Right, I've had discussions with Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and we will work, um, we don't want them to do the work. We will develop whatever they tell us they need in their materials. Uh, we have offers from the University of Michigan as well as Blue Cross Blue Shield to work with us on developing materials. Uh, and we will take the lead from Michigan Department of Health and Human Services on exactly what that would look like. Uh, but we will do the bulk of the work if they want us to, to get this done. One more thing I think this committee, is, is it behooved me if I didn't express Blue Cross and Blue Shield is a partner with Family Against Narcotics, mm -hmm. as is Henry Ford, as is... Uh, McLaren, Beaumont. It just Munson. goes on. They all understand, and I, I'm sure, Dr. Bison, you would be the best. 
that when a doctor does something, we all trust and we all don't ask questions because there's superior knowledge and expertise we rely on. What has gone too far is that little bottle that went home was the impetus that started the addiction at most of these. Dr. Colucci, it took a little bit of time, but we all got in the car and got there. He said it. We manage pain different ways, and some people have a different tolerance. But at the end of the day, if the family wants something other than that, we have a right to give it to them. I guess I'm trying to um, get at something very specific. I understand the, the problem, and, um, okay. and I understand what you're trying to do. I'm just trying to get a handle on exactly. Then so uh, already the participants to put something together have been chosen, including private sector business. Is that right? Um, there's so many partners at Families Against Narcotics. Yeah, we've, we actually produced the video ourselves. Um, and we do all of our own videos. We actually have someone that we hire that's worked with us for 14 years doing this. Uh, so we will do that. And then the written materials, we also produce written materials as well. Uh, but we know that there are certain guidelines that I know from working on the governor's task force that there are lots of rules and regulations on what you can do in a school. Uh, we just didn't start producing those yet because we need some guidance from MDHHS. Uh, and how close they want to work in partnership. Do they want us to produce something and then they just edit it? Uh, but we will work those details out. And that's why we have a time frame here to do this in. Um, so it's a contractual ar ar arrangement? How does that work? Uh, contractual with MDHHS? We're just partners. I mean, we would not, I, I would not start this project without first asking them um, to review it, make sure that they're agreeable with it. They do a lot with health education in schools. We're not trying to usurp that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we just saw a need for this particular piece of education. We talked about it when I was on, chairing the governor's task force, um, and we took the initiative to produce the video at our cost. And we would make it available to every school. We're in lots of schools to begin with, so. Uh, that was my okay. next question, because it has the specific <coughs> video named. Yes, dangers of the game. Dangers of the game. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? Dangers of the game. Yes. And, um, and I was wondering, because under the fiscal analysis, it, it uh, says that it's still pending. So well, I was uh, just trying to figure out, are we using proprietary information? Is it yeah. just uh, uh, Linda, this? Linda, we just talked about that. Um, th these are trademarked. So <laughs> Families Against Narcotics has been around 14 years, 15 years now. And the uh, attorney that works for tr the, the Families Against Narcotics who does these videos, who, who, who actually has the material, wants to make sure that all that stuff is protected. It's proprietary. That information, though, is not going to be duplicative, it's going to be supplementing whatever DHHS is currently putting in the schools right now. It sub, 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 supplements it so that we have a comprehensive program to give to athletes to advise them they have a right to do what they need to do, and that's ask the question, do I have a substitute so I don't get hooked on an opioid? Yep. And, and I, I understand that fully. I'm trying to get to um, the cost. Okay. We are not going to charge anybody for the use of this video. Um, we have a history. We've never charged for anything we do. Uh, we're totally nonprofit, and that means we never charge for our services. We, I never charge to go out and speak somewhere. Uh, we have made videos available to schools to use for years. We will give it to them. I would like to thank you for your dedication from your job. I'm sure you saw a lot of heartache. I did. I appreciate you um, using your time now to help others. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Johnson. Senator Brinks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for uh, bringing this for forward. Um, I have uh, met with folks from FAN in my community as well, and I appreciate the good work that you are doing. Um, and so I don't question your dedication at all to all of this. I do have questions, though, uh, uh, in a, a couple of things. One is the, that who actually is doing the training? So you have various situations in schools. Uh, so will it, is a coach responsible for that? And then who is then ensuring that it actually does happen? Is, where's the accountability piece if we're going to require it in law? Who's checking on that? 
Is it exactly the same as the concussion training? Identical. That's why I didn't want to create a new model. Mm -hmm. I want to implement a model that we've already tested. And truth be told, we don't want to re duplicate or, or reinvent a wheel that's already been rolling already. Okay. So, uh, like anything else, the, the, there will be a, probably a training video for coaches at least to implement that with parents because if there's ever a discussion, this needs to be had at the parent level. Just a form giving consent to have your child play a sport is utter baloney. Utter baloney. The fact that they are, if they become injured, check with a coach and said, look, is there something I should know about my son's injury or my daughter's, you know, injury? And then, therefore, this link must be like anything else with concussions. Sure, but if I may, you, and that would not be required, right, because they'd already know. Because right. when their child signs up to play a sport, they would already have seen this video. 100%. Okay. Spot so, on. And thank you. What, what district, so she knows that her... Programs are working statewide. Yeah, I know certainly. In, you know we've, okay. I know so we've talked. We're all good. <laughs> okay. In um, uh, my second question is uh, along the lines of, of uh, Senator Johnson's as well. I I completely appreciate the work of FAN, and you, you know you're an organization with longevity and deep roots now throughout the state. However, in 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 years, when this law is still on the books, I do have some hesitation about putting a very specific uh, name of a very specific video created by your organization in uh, statute. And I wonder if we shouldn't um, allow that to be designated by DHHS or by some other um, experts who you know, if there's a panel of experts who decides what goes into this kind of curriculum uh, on other things as well. I, and I'm not sure what um, uh, Senator Pros did uh, regarding the concussion, but I thought that it was um, determined by DHHS. Well, there is a determination. We start somewhere, but as lawmakers, we all know we can adjust the law accordingly. And right now, I don't see any video out there, Winnie, and on top of it, yeah. it concerns me that if we don't start somewhere, we're not getting started at all. But I agree with you. You know what? Maybe we say the initial video would be this video, which is the danger of the game, and then and thereafter shall be designated by DHHS. I have no objection. Right. Or uh, designated by DHHS or uh, to be updated periodically as at a time frame that's determined in the bill, something like that, so that we are getting the best and, and most recent most valuable information in front of uh, parents and students. We do that with uh, all Something of our like videos, that. So, so, so I, I, I get that. I don't want to put in statute. I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not questioning the integrity of your organization or the quality of your product. What I'm saying is I that understand. may change in the future, and I don't want to put in statute to limit us to something that may not be the best choice in 10 years or 20 years. I'll have Justin from my office check with your DA, uh, LD and make sure that we get it to you. And on top of it, if you're agreeable to maybe get the state dart, state debt, state the start date a little earlier for Judge Davis. <laughs> we, can, we can take a look at that. Right. I just don't want it to take a, an act of Congress, so to speak, to uh, get the best information to people. I agree. Thanks. Appreciate Thank you, it. Senator Brink. Senator Good Tice. Point. My question was along the same lines. I, um, I utterly respect what you're doing, and that you're, that you're providing this for, for free is absolutely astounding. So if you're doing the best thing and providing it at the lowest cost, then, then that will end up being the default. But I always hesitate when we in, sat, in statute specify a particular company or a particular organization or a particular film in this case, when we're, when we're specifying something individual um, rather than specifying the idea or generically what the intent is of the bill, um, I would prefer that we specify what we're intending to do rather than a particular thing. We'll try Does that to make sense? The language. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Tice. Senator McDonald. Yeah, I just want to extend my personal appreciation for Judge Davis and the work she's done. Um, that happened to my best friend, exactly, 2010. Fortunately, he died of a drug overdose. It was my relationship with De La Salle that got me involved with FAN, and I just want to commend you, Pete, and thank you, Judge Davis, thank you. for everything you do. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Boino. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Davis, uh, thank you very much. I'm also echoing the, uh, the words of uh, Senator McDonald, but uh, I do want to let uh, the committee members know I've known Judge Davis for over 45 years, and she has been a tremendous, tremendous uh, public servant. 
uh, not only to the state of Michigan, but to so many individuals uh, in Macomb County. And I also had the thought too, and I don't know how we would approach this, but it's a shame that we would limit it just to organized sports. I mean, this video is so powerful. Uh, this is something that you would almost like to see uh, incorporated in our public and non-public schools uh, here in the state of Michigan. And in closing, I have to say that Judge Davis was the best teacher I ever had. Thank you. Wow, there is a, quite a compliment there. That, that was my first year of teaching, and he was a senior. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Senator Brinks. Just one uh, final comment. I want to make sure that if we're requiring this to be done by school districts uh, and other entities, right now it's free, but if it is a requirement on them and at some point in the future it's not free, um, it essentially turns into an unfunded mandate. Uh, so I want to be careful that we are getting the wording right about uh, how it's paid for and um, that there are there are ways to make sure that uh, it gets done and that there isn't cost that becomes a barrier. I will make sure that I look at Senator Perosa's and mirror image, that language, so that we don't have any hiccups when we come back, if we have to come back. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate all the comments. I had one, uh, Senator Bueno, uh, um, did bring that up. I think all school districts throughout the state are a little different. <coughs> and I know that um, sporting events can be vary from hockey to football to basketball to you name it. And when you're in some of the northern areas, uh, equestrian sports, I, I think somehow we need to work on how we, and we'll get together, Senator, on what we can do. But I, I do think it needs to be in a broader uh, fashion because there's so many different um, things that take place. And this is so important, especially when you read, you know, 80% start before they're, 20 years old, um, and it starts because of the first pill. So I appreciate that. Any other committee questions? If not, I want to thank both of you for being here today. Powerful testimony. Um, I just want to say thank you again, and I'll read in cards. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you.